So we'll first cover a few definitions. First is the coefficient of relatedness, also known as the coefficient of relationship. And as the name implies, this is reflecting how closely related any two people are. We'll then talk about the degree of relatedness, which is a closely related concept. So you may be familiar with this, hearing things like your first degree relatives or second degree relatives. That is also an indication of how closely related you are to someone. And then the last two concepts we'll talk about are consanguinity and then the coefficient of inbreeding, also known as the inbreeding coefficient. These two terms also go together. So first, the coefficient of relationship. The first thing is to know that half of any child's DNA comes from each parent. So 50% of a child's DNA will come from their mother, 50% will come from their father. And it's also true that the mother passes on 50% of her DNA to her child, and the father passes on 50% of his DNA to his child. So therefore, you are 50% similar to each of your parents. And that gives us a coefficient of relationship equal to 0 0.50. So important to know that anyone who's a first degree relative will have a coefficient of relationship of 0.5. The coefficient of relationship or the COR can be estimated from a pedigree. And we'll go through an example of that in just a second. But the way to calculate that is one half to the power of n, where n is the number of steps between the two people who you're trying to estimate the relationship between. N in this case can also be viewed as the degree of relatedness, and we'll see this here shortly. So in this case, you want to use the coefficient of relationship to estimate the relatedness between two different individuals, and we'll contrast this with what's called the inbreeding coefficient later, which applies really to a single individual. So let's say that we wanted to calculate the degree of relatedness using a pedigree between these two individuals here with the orange arrows. So how would we go about doing that? So the first thing I would do is to count the number of steps between these two individuals. Essentially, how many relatives do we have to get through before we can arrive at the next person. So in this case, to demonstrate that we have, uh, we'd have to go through the mother in this case, so that's one, and then this person's mother, two, then this person's mother, three, and then this person's sibling, four. So there are four steps that separate these two individuals, and therefore they are fourth degree relatives. This person happens to be a maternal great uncle. Now, can we calculate the coefficient of relatedness in this case? Yes, we can. So this is essentially one half to n, which is the degree of relatedness. So this is one over 16. And this is the proportion of DNA that is shared between these two individuals with the arrow. We could calculate this for any two people in this pedigree. So if we wanted, say, to calculate the grandmother in this case, we could calculate that. We know that they are second degree relatives. And therefore, if we wanted to calculate the coefficient of relatedness, this would be one half to the second, this would be one over four. This would be the coefficient of relatedness between this individual and their grandmother. And we can see the relationship between the degree of relatedness and the coefficient of relationship here in this table. Up top, we have identical twins. They are 100% identical. Therefore, the coefficient of relationship is one. Two people who are totally unrelated 
are going to have a coefficient of relationship of zero. And then you have sort of everywhere in between, these are relatives that are not identical twins. And so for example, the parent-child relationship, the degree of relatedness in this case is one, they are first degree relatives. And then the coefficient of relationship is 0 0.5. So in that one half to the N, where N is the degree of relatedness, that's what is being shown in this table. So the coefficient of relationship represents the probability that two individuals share a, a given allele inherited from a common ancestor. So now we're going to move on to consanguinity. Consanguinity occurs when a couple are blood relatives. So for example, cousins. Up to 10% of marriages worldwide are between second cousins or closer. So it's actually not uncommon for there to be consanguinity. And one of the reasons we think about consanguinity is because there is a increased risk for autosomal recessive disorders. And that risk is on the order of two to 3% extra risk for first cousins. The risk of having an autosomal recessive disorder increases as the degree of relatedness between the parents increases. So if you are first degree relatives and have a child together, that risk is gonna be much higher than if you're second cousins and have a child together. So the coefficient of inbreeding is a way to quantify the risk that a child will be what's called identical by descent or IBD or an allele that's inherited from a common ancestor of the two parents. The coefficient of inbreeding is also known as F, the letter F. And this value is zero approximately if the parents are unrelated. That's what we're saying here. And the maximum value of F in practice is 0 0.25. And this is if the parents are first degree relatives. So siblings or parent and child. Note that F is half of the coefficient of relationship between the two parents. So if the parent-child relationship is one half, that's the coefficient of the relationship, then F is going to be half of that, so it's going to be one fourth. And that's the 0.25 that we get here. This is one fourth between first degree relatives. Now, while F depends on the relationship between two parents, the coefficient of relatedness can be calculated between any two individuals. So they don't necessarily have to be mates or partners. They're just relatives. So the coefficient of inbreeding or F can be calculated from a pedigree. And we'll go through an example of that here in just a second. Now, when we talk about the coefficient of inbreeding, this implies that somebody is inbred. And what that means is from the perspective of pedigree that there's a loop in the pedigree chart. What this means is that there's essentially a shared common ancestor within the pedigree, indicating consanguinity. And it just so happens that the number of shared ancestors equals the number of loops that are in the pedigree. Here we're showing a pedigree consisting of two individuals, H and I, who are consanguineous or related. And we can see that they have a shared common ancestor, two shared common ancestors, in fact, and these are their grandparents. So they are first cousins. Now, one question we could ask is, what is the coefficient of inbreeding for this person, J, the offspring of H and I? So to understand this, let's stop for a second and think about what the coefficient of inbreeding is. So essentially, this, this is the chance that for any given locus, let's just pick one locus, which has two alleles, and let's say that this locus for individual B, they have the alleles one and two. And for individual C, they have the alleles three and four. And we're, we're at the same locus, we're looking at the same gene. So the coefficient of inbreeding is asking, 
what are the chances that this individual, J, is homozygous for either 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, or 4, 4? That is, what is the chance of being homozygous for any of these loci inherited from their common ancestor? which is, in this case, both of their grandparents. So to do that, we can actually just use math. So we can say, what is the chance that, uh, that this individual ends up with two alleles, one, one? The chance of B passing down their one allele is one half. Then the chance of E passing it to H is also one half. And then the chance of H passing it to J is also one half. And we have the same probabilities of B passing it to F, one half, and of F passing it to I, one half, and then of I passing it to J, one half. So the probability that J is homozygous for one one is one half times 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 one half. So that's one half to the sixth. And that is one over 64. So we can repeat this exercise for each of these other three loci. And we get the same answer. So this would be one over 64 plus 1 over 64, plus 1 over 64, plus 1 over 64. And this would give us 4 over 64, or 1 over 16. And this is the coefficient of inbreeding. Now, there's another way to calculate this using the loop method, which we'll walk through here in just a second. But this is essentially what the coefficient of inbreeding means. It is the probability that a given individual who is the offspring of a consanguineous marriage, their probability that they are identical by descent based on their shared common ancestors. So very important to know that. A second method we can use is called the loop method. So in this method, we have the number of loops that are equal to the number of shared ancestors. So each shared ancestor, each common ancestor, is given a loop to start with. And what we can do essentially is draw the shortest path between that person and the proband of interest. And so that's person J here. And if we do that, we can essentially draw out these nodes, which reflect the people in the pedigree. And so what we have is this loop that is formed between the shared common ancestor and the proband and sort of everyone in between. And we can do the same for the other shared common ancestor. That's person C. And then what we can do next is to count the number of nodes in this loop. If we do that, we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six people in this loop. And similarly, we also have one, two, three, four, five, six people in this other loop. And what we can do now is use the following equation, one half over n minus one, where n is the number of nodes in the loop. And we can do this for each of the loops. So we'll have one half raised to the power of six because we have six nodes minus one. And that gives us one to the power of five or one over 32. And we can do the same for this other loop over here. It's essentially the same math and we end up getting one over 32. And then for our last step to calculate the coefficient of inbreeding, we can just simply add these two numbers together, one over 32 plus one over 32, to get our coefficient of inbreeding. 
which is 1 over 16. And that's a alternative way to calculate the coefficient of inbreeding. So this table compares different definitions related to consanguinity and relatedness. And we'll first start with the term consanguinity. This is a kinship or a relationship between two individuals who share a common ancestor. And so there has to be two people in this case. And the reason we care about consanguinity is because, as we mentioned before, there's an increased risk for recessive disorders. Next term is the degree of relatedness. Now this describes how closely related any two individuals are. So again, the number of people, you have to have two people in this case to say they are this degree of relatedness apart. So these are your first degree relatives, your parents or your siblings, your second degree relatives or your grandparents or your aunts and uncles. And so this is used in both social and biological contexts right, to describe how close two relationships are. Now, the coefficient of relationship is important to contrast with the coefficient of inbreeding. Coefficient of relationship, just like the degree of relatedness, involves two people, and it's essentially a measure of how much DNA do two people share. And it really ranges between zero and one. This is a mathematical term, one being people who are identical, so identical twins, zero being people who are completely unrelated. Right, so just know that it is more of a mathematical term, as is the coefficient of inbreeding. So this one is involving only one person. And this person generally is the offspring of a couple who is consanguineous, who is related in some way. And what it is, is the probability that this one individual has two alleles at a locus that are identical by descent. This is what we went through on the previous slide. This, like the coefficient of relationship, it's a coefficient, so it's a mathematical term ranging between 0 and 0 0.25. It's going to be 0 0.25 or 1 over 4 when you have first degree relatives. And it is half of the coefficient of relationship. So hopefully this was a helpful summary of some of these different terms and when to use them. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also subscribe to my monthly newsletter with board-style questions. And finally, you can buy me a coffee if you'd like to show your support for the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.